You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. This is your host, Shamaya Reed. And today, we have an awesome bonus show. We have a entrepreneur here in San Antonio, Whitney Tolson. And she's all about counseling, all about mental health. And I want to just say thanks for taking time on your busy schedule. Because you took time out to come to the studio on the 12th floor just to kick it with I Am Refocused Radio. So first of all, thank you. And how are you doing? Thank you for having me, and I'm doing well. This is something I'm passionate about, so I'm happy you guys invited me to speak. And for the topic today, we're going to kind of talk about counseling and mental health of uh, mental health awareness. When you started your business, what was basically give us a backdrop of your services and what was the vision that you had for the community to serve? Okay. So is it okay if I take it a little bit back on how oh, I started yeah. and got into Oh, let's go way back, man, <laughs> okay. before the business. So um, originally from North Carolina, I got my undergrad at North Carolina A&T in sociology. Um, always loved helping people. So when I came to San Antonio, it was kind of hard to find employment with just a sociology degree. And so I started researching and I saw that UTSA had a counseling program. And so I looked up counseling. I said, this sounds like something I'm doing already, in a sense. Um, So that's kind of how I got started. Uh, I went to school. um, I had to complete uh, postgraduate work where you have to get so many hours before you get fully licensed. Um, So that's how my background started. Um, As far as becoming an entrepreneur and leaving the nine to five, that was a little hard of a transition. Initially, I was working full time and then doing private practice on the side, which made it a little easier. But over time, I realized my passion was in working with people in private practice because I had the chance to be creative opposed to a lot of the red tape you find when you work a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it started. And when you decided to take that leap of faith is what some people say, to be on, become your own boss, have your own schedule and make your own plans. But before you know it, you were in like 10,000 hats at once. How was that transition when you started on day one with your business? So I guess at first it was, it was a little easier, but it was still challenging because it wasn't like I had like a full schedule like I would when I was at work. At work, it's a lot more structured. You kind of know you're going to get paid regardless. <laughs> and so uh, having to go out and try to recruit, market, network, all of those things, I had to find time and kind of get my own structure going. So it was a little challenging at first. Um, I had support from my husband, which made it a lot easier, but it was still very challenging. Yeah, because you, you basically have to... Before you were able to rely on resources that were already developed in position for you to have, but now you have to start from scratch and you have to build from ground zero. When you started to get your brand out into the community, what were some of the ways that you were allowing yourself to break the ice, so to speak, when you were introdu- introducing your brand, your services to the community of San Antonio? So I had to kind of focus on a niche in a sense because there are a lot of therapists in the city. Um, There's a lot of uh, mental illnesses and diagnoses in the world. And I had to really narrow that down to what is it I'm passionate about? I'm passionate about helping people, but if I want to target a specific um, audience, I can, you know, get more clients and then focus on the research behind that um, area. So I always love working with adolescents. So that was something I was going to continue to focus on. Um, Just over this past year, I started uh, focusing on maternal mental health, which is something that I didn't see um, a lot of people doing in San Antonio. So it was a a big need and it still is a need. So that's kind of how I narrowed down um, my focus by uh, getting a niche. So you're out here, you're doing your services, you're building your brand, you're influencing people, and you're certified. You have all the legal things out the way, too, because that's the other thing, being an entrepreneur, 
what separates having a hobby versus having businesses. You follow the rules. <laughs> you pay your taxes. You have separate business accounts and the whole nine yards. As you are growing as an entrepreneur, as you are growing with your growing with your influence, what's the things that excite you every day when it's like, man, this is like this is my baby. You know, this is my this is my kid. This is my business. What is it that keeps you motivated every day? Oh, man, that's a deep question. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> I know one of the things that keeps me motivated is um, I'm helping people. Um, so when people find me um, online or if someone refers them to me, it gets me excited. Because for one, someone's spreading the word and I must be doing something right. Um, the other thing that inspires me, um, it would be my family. I recently had a, well, last year I had a son, and he kind of keeps me motivated to want to, you know, push on and have that area where I can, you know, be a mother, but also be a boss at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, so he inspires me to want to do better. If you're just now tuning in, this is Shemai with Iron Refocus Radio talking to Whitney Tolson. You can go to the website, WhitneyTolson.com. So, all right, I'm one of the listeners. I'm on that website right now. Well, maybe not right now, but soon. <laughs> and I'm checking out everything. What can I expect as far as how can I book time to sit down and talk to you, to learn about your business, learn about the services? How does that process take place? So when you go on my website, you'll probably see um, the About Me section. It talks about what I'm passionate about, what I do, and then it'll just have the areas that I'm focused on or the, um, the audience, which is the postpartum moms and fathers as well, um, the adolescents or teen therapy. And one area that I enjoy but I'm not really is it's the premarital counseling. You'll also find that on there. Um, my social media links. So yeah, it's just a it's it's a lot of information about me and how I work through uh, the therapy process. And when you have someone come in, sit in your office, and talk to them, do you find it that they know exactly what they need, or do you help guide them to find out what exactly do they need? Like for instance, they have problem A, but maybe you're like, well, let's shift here. Yes, that happens very often where someone may come in and the problem is the city they live in. You know, why why is San Antonio this type of city? I moved here and it's just full of these type of people. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have that. It happens. And I have to work with uh, these individuals to kind of restructure their thought process Mm -hmm. and reframe their thoughts and... It's a process. Um, so was that person more like a negative person or were they just like a mixture of just kind of going through some things? Because I think San Antonio is amazing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, say, <laughs> I wouldn't say that they're negative. I will say that we all have unhelpful thinking habits. Yeah. And I think once we can identify what those are, for instance, somebody may be a person that compares everything. Mm-hmm. And when you compare a lot, you always see the lack. You know, um, some people, they put pressure on themselves and we call them shoulds and must and things should be this way. And, you know, it's just extra pressure. It creates anxiety. And I feel that happens a lot when we are not satisfied where we currently are in life. Yeah. We I mean, I'm not speaking for everybody, just speak for myself. There's times where you can be stuck in life and you start to look outward versus inward like it's their fault I'm the way I am or it's because of so and so when they did to me 10 years ago when you hear things like that how you don't have to spill the whole sauce because I know people need to book you so you need <laughs> if you, you want to book her for a session go com. but give us a little teaser what's some of the things that you use to approach those limited thinking and those past, you know, hurts that kind of prevents people from moving forward in life. Okay. So what you were saying, I already recognize as the defense mechanisms like blaming and, you know, sometimes we do that to defend ourselves and we're not the problem. So with individuals that may not see that they're contributing uh, to the problem, I again have to walk them through a process. It's, it's called cognitive behavior therapy. And basically, it's challenging um, their thinking. Um, I do certain activities or interventions that 
really make them think. Um, and like you said, I don't want to spill all the beans because mm-hmm. I, I, I always Richie come Booker, see me. <laughs> but, um, basically, we're going to look at some of the things that are in your what's in your control and what's not in your control. And we kind of work with that. And sometimes I have to do a list for clients like out of this situation, what can you control? Can you control your partner? Can you control management? Can you control the law? So it's kind of like, well, what can you control in this situation? And then we learn to accept what we can control, what we can't control, and we kind of work from there. Kind of makes me think, because I'm going to drop some metaphors real quick. Like when you're tuning a, a guitar, right? You know when it's out of tune. You feel it, you hear it, it don't sound great. It's like you can't play your favorite songs now. But once all the strings are in tune, I feel like that's what you're doing with everybody that comes your way for your services. You're getting them back in tune and in their way to be positioned to live the best life. Definitely. Thank you for that metaphor. Exactly. I appreciate it. I'm learning from the best. We have Whitney Tolson. <laughs> I mean, you can't get better than that. We have someone who's really trying to find, I, I would say, the roots of the problem, the root of the problem. And when you have those moments, share with us maybe one experience, because I'm sure you have many experiences and stories of a client who their reaction was they have that breakthrough moment. Oh, man. I have to think about it. It's a lot of cases. Let me see if I can think about. So maybe a client that, without trying to give too much information, um, they're in a situation now where things have changed drastically. Let's say a new parent. And they may look at their partner negatively now, that they don't help out around the house, um, And just everything is just not good now because they have a new kid. So just helping them reframe that the situation is challenging. It's a process. It's not the person, you know, or the people involved. It's the situation. Um, And it's, I don't want to say practicing, but it is. I give homework to my uh, clients. And they go home and they do these activities. And over time, um, they come back and they realize that the people aren't the problem. It's a situation and working on what I can do about it. It's, it's more so giving them the tools and they're doing the work um, outside of the office setting. And this might be a hard question. I hope it's not a hard <laughs> question. I hope it's not. But what's the difference? And I think this will help educate the listeners who are listening to this episode. What's the difference from a non-professional trying to give someone advice who might have some mental illness going on versus someone like yourself who's certified? What's the major difference? Educate the audience on that. Okay, that's a great question because a few years ago, um, no knocking to life coaches, by the way, but it was a lot of confusion on life coaches and counselors. And life coaches, they do help people um, in certain areas of their lives. But when it comes to mental health, if you're in a situation where, let's say you do have depression, you probably would want to speak to someone that's trained um, in that field. Um, because that's a condition that is, you know, you, you I don't want to say it's a medical condition, but it can lead to that. Um, and if you are struggling in your marriage, you probably want to talk to a marriage and family therapist that's going to school, that's put in the hours, just like a doctor gets residency. They have to be trained by someone that's a supervisor. You wouldn't want just someone operating on you that says, yeah, I could patch you up. You wouldn't Mm -hmm. want that. Mm -hmm. So it's just the skill set um, versus even advice from friends and family. Sometimes they can give good advice, but sometimes their advice is very biased yeah. Um, when you speak with a therapist or a counselor, that person doesn't know you. We have that professional boundary that after we leave this office, I'm not going to contact you. I'm not going to hang out with you at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Um, we just have that boundary. So the biases sometimes get in the way of people healing and getting better in life. So I hope that answered your question. No, that makes sense because it's very important when you have professionals in their set of skills in their industry come to play to help provide something that someone really needs because you can get advice from everybody but it's like to a certain degree a certain point you're going to have to make an appointment Yeah. because if you don't you might be 
it's almost like going to a big, won't name any names, but a big search engine and just say, oh, I have those symptoms. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, so that right there is is why you have to have professionals like Whitney Tolson and what she's doing with mental health and counseling services. So someone signs up for their appointment. How long is a a session and how long are you willing to work with clients? How does that work structure-wise? Okay. So uh, when a client wants to set up an appointment, we do the intake call where I basically, I'm kind of screening them in a sense. I want to know a little bit about what's going on. Are you having any suicidal thoughts? Because if they are, then maybe I need to see you a bit sooner. If you have, you know, the intent to harm, then maybe we need to get you some emergency care. So that's the first step. And then it's the um, assessment where they come in and it's kind of like an interview. Um, We just sit down and talk, more so them speaking about who they are, a little bit about their background, what the problem is, how long it's been going on, and some of the things that they have tried already. And that's usually about 50 minutes to 60 minutes. And after that, I develop what we call a treatment plan and we set goals and we start working. Um, I would say each session is 50 to 60 minutes. And then treatment, it really depends on how severe um, the situation is. If it's someone that's clinically depressed, um, you know, and have passive thoughts of suicide, I probably see them at least 12 sessions. If it's someone that's just going through maybe an adjustment disorder um, where they're just struggling to get adjusted to things, maybe about five to eight sessions. And as far as the people you serve, is it only San Antonio area or are people you serve people outside the city of San Antonio as well? So right now it's just been San Antonio. However, I'm licensed to see anybody in the state of Texas. And we do have what we call a telehealth or telemental health where I can do a video sessions for people. But um, I can't go outside of the state of Texas. Um, I don't have the right to practice outside of Texas. See right there, transparency. You see how real she got? <laughs> sometimes entrepreneurs, you, you get hit with some things and you want to like think about, well, shoot, maybe I can just do it. No, no, no. Entrepreneur, you have to think totally different from any other way of doing things. You have rules, you have certifications, you have all these things you have to have in line so your business can be trusted and it can be on the fast track of growth. When you see the city of San Antonio, and back a little bit back to the entrepreneur side, when you see all the small businesses that are popping up, people flying in, moving all over the country to come here, what excites you the most in the business world, seeing like-minded people in your city building their brand? Um, It excites me that Um, I have the opportunity to meet people that can help me, you know, match my energy levels, um, people that can connect me, people that I can connect and help. Um, Just the opportunity to network and, I guess, make the city a better place. Mm -hmm. No, I'll ride with that because it's all about what you contribute and you can't blame you can't blame anybody if you're not in the game yourself. Like you can't sit on the sidelines. Once you got the opportunity to be on that field or that court, you need to go, you know, make things happen, man. When you are seeing how things in San Antonio, there's there's some issues that we have as far as, like, homeless issues and stuff like that where people are having mental illness. Mm -hmm. What's some of the things that you would like to see in the future, even if it's with your practices, what would be some of the things you'd like to see being executed in San Antonio City? Well, when it comes to populations like the homeless populations or any populations where it's like low income <clears throat> or lack of resources, I definitely want to see the city um, create opportunities um, where more mental health therapists can be involved. I know it's hard when you're in private practice to I mean, a nonprofit, if I was to develop a nonprofit, but sometimes it's hard in private practice where if you want to give away free sessions, which I have, (laughs) but that's not, you know, the norm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do volunteer a lot of my time outside of my office, but um, I just want to see that there are more resources in this city for people and more education um, for people who may not have uh, that connection to that resource. 
because a lot of, like you said, homeless people, they do have mental illnesses that aren't addressed, and sometimes they're funneled through a system. So I just think we need to patch up that system. And speaking of systems, we have our veterans who are also suffering PTSD and, and going through their things after their service to our country. What are some of the services that you have available for anyone who might be listening, who might be a veteran and they need some help out there? Yes, I have worked with veterans. Um, I do a lot with um, anxiety, uh, depression, um, and mood disorders, um, and some trauma. So I do service veterans um, and a lot of their family members. When you are doing your thing, building your brand, you're seeing the results come in. You're seeing happy clients walk away and starting to spread the word because there's nothing better than word of mouth advertising because people to people, man, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, there's nothing better when you have someone who's happy about the results of your service and they go tell their friends because you are not just building a grassroots movement. You're building a foundation for years to come. So as you are building yourself as a professional, what are some of the things you do when things get tough? Mm -hmm. Like when things, like when the clients don't come fast enough, <laughs> when problems pop up within the business, what, what do you do to keep yourself grounded when the tough times come? So I am a believer of journaling and praying is a form of self-care because I am one that can get like excited if things aren't going the way that I expect them to go. And that's when I have to think about the tools that I'm, you know, teaching my clients like, well, let me ground myself. Let me um, see what's working. Um, and then sometimes you just have to be patient and let it unfold because it does happen where things do slow down and it's like, okay, what? Um, <laughs> I know like things are going great. What, what's going on? So, um, I, I have to, um, ground myself and then sometimes just reaching out and, you know, I do cold calls. I will, I'll cold call people. Um, I've done some marketing in my past, so that that's been helpful for me. Um, and then going to um, networking events and reaching out to people that's in the field to see, you know, if you ever have clients that may need help with this, I'm available. And another tough question, I'm sure you're going to take it well. But someone listening right now in San Antonio, and they fit the, the description of someone who has symptoms who may need to go seek for pro professional help. Why should they book you right now, man? Why, why should they come to your office? You know, maybe they're on the fence. They're like, well, I don't know if she can really help me. You know, that type of person where they're strong. You know, they, they're probably a great professional person, but yeah. sometimes people don't like to get help. Yeah. What would you say to that person that fits the description of needing to get professional services but maybe on the fence? I would say that there is no shame in um, getting help. I know a lot of time, like you said, professional people are usually, we can be very strong-willed and uh, I don't want to say type A, but in a sense, we just want to get everything done. We want to do things our way. And sometimes that is the challenge that we face is how we are doing things and want to do things our way. So it's no shame in getting help. Um, the good thing about counseling is that it's confidential. Um, I can't release your information. Yeah, you're not doing selfies for Instagram yeah. or anything like that. So it's private, <laughs> and I'm non-judgmental. I'm, I'm empathetic, and that's just who I am as a person. So it makes it easier for me to do that in my profession. So that's that's I would say why they should seek help. Um, well, man, it's been fun. Like I said, time always flies by because it's like ice on the stove is gone. Time is gone already. I'm so mad right now. No, I'm just playing. I'm not mad. I'm going to book a session. But no, I'm just playing. <laughs> all jokes aside, but when when people are going to your website and they book an appointment and they get services, what are some of the things that you would like your business to do maybe short term? What are some of the short term goals before we let you go that you like to see your your own business do in San Antonio community? Um, 
I it's something I'm actually kind of doing now is I'm doing I'm doing a lot of uh, speaking engagements and we call it psychoeducation, but I'm, I'm educating the community about certain topics. Right now, the focus for me is um, maternal mental health, uh, postpartum depression. So I've been partnering up with a few other um people in the birth uh, field and speaking to some of their clients, inviting the community out to those events. So I am doing free groups. Um, Yeah, so that's something I'm doing. And that's kind of, I'm getting that under the works right now. I'm already trying to get my calendar together for next year. So that's something I'm working on right now. So once again, this is Whitney Tolson. You go to WhitneyTolson.com and find out all the information that you need to know to book your appointment to get unstuck. Is there an office number that they can call? Yes, it's 210-570-2060. And before we officially let you go, is there anything you would like to tell the listener before we put on the brakes? Um, I just want to say that you're not alone if you're out there struggling. Um, I want to let you know that one in five adults go through some type of mental illness each year. And so if that's each year, you can just imagine that most people you probably know have gone through something or will go through something in their lifetime. And if you feel like you're at a point where you feel stuck or hopeless, I definitely encourage you to seek professional help because personally, I don't like to know or see people struggling and suffering in silence. So you're not alone. Once again, this is I Am Refocus Radio with your host, Shemaya Reed, and we are here talking to Whitney Tolson. You can go to her website, WhitneyTolson.com. You need you need to know how to spell the name? It's W-H-I-T-N-I-T-O-S-O-N.com. Once again, we appreciate everyone listening to our shows. You can find all of them archived at IamRefocusRadio.com. And once again, like we say on every single show, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. This is Gene Hildebrand with Engage SA. For a comprehensive listing of Christian events in San Antonio each week, check out the Engage Christian calendar. The calendar is distributed via email each week to about 700 subscribers absolutely free of charge as a ministry to the San Antonio Christian community. To subscribe, go to Engage SA on Facebook and click the button for email list. Or you can find the calendar posted on Engage SA as well as 17 other group sites. I'm Gene Hildebrand. Engage. Hi, San Antonio. Need a barber? Visit our good friend, Rico Rodriguez, the owner of Rockefeller's Barbershop in San Antonio, Texas, 1733 Babcock Road, and book your appointment today by calling 210-782-5188.